As the market starts to show some signs of correction, one of the most important things homeowners need to look at is pricing their home correctly. Hello everybody, it's John Wentworth, Wentworth Real Estate Group, and I'm gonna walk you through a system that I actually used back in 2007, 2008, when the market was rapidly uh, declining, and show you how this pricing strategy will help you get ahead of the curve. So first I wanna to talk to you about when we're in an improving market, because that's what you're used to experiencing, right? And it gave you the ability to almost kind of say, hey, my neighbor sold for X, so I could list higher for Y. And I'll show you how that actually did work. So if we look at this graph, this is an improving market. And I want you to think about, and of course, I'm gonna probably show an extreme so that I can identify what I'm getting at here. But let's just say you listed your home. This is market price right here. So this line would represent where your home will sell at on a pricing diagram. And let's say you chose to price a little bit higher than your neighbor, right? And time, maybe this is two weeks, four weeks, maybe this is two months. Time caught up as the market continued to improve and it intersected with your price and your home sold. Then we experienced this rapid growth, right? Where homes were selling much quicker than even, even two months. They were starting to sell in days. And that's when we had a big spike you know, each year homes were going up 15, 20% in value, depending on what area you were in. And so you could take the same theory um, and just apply it, but you're selling in a shorter window. So it was easy, right? You could pretty much do what you wanted to do and it would be okay. But the theory here is that even if you priced a little bit too high or what seemed too high, time cured that because the market was rising so quickly. Now we're in a market that is, you know, it's correcting. It's pulling back a little bit. And one of the problems that I'm seeing right now is sellers are still using this strategy. And so homes are starting to sit. If you jump on Zillow and you throw in your zip code, you're gonna see a lot of homes that say price reduction. You would not have seen that last year. Here's how you can avoid making that mistake. So again, we have a, a declining market here. I'm gonna straight shore that up a little bit. And let's just use that same theory, right? Hey, I'm gonna price it a little bit high because I think I can get it. And now time is working against you. So let's say you're two weeks, four weeks, maybe you get to two months, and you make a price reduction to where you should have started. You make a price reduction to where you should have started. But because you waited in a declining market, now that original start price is no longer applicable. Now it takes another price reduction. But what happens is after that first price reduction, you of course wanna give it a shot and you wait a couple weeks, maybe two months, and then you reduce again. You can't catch up. So right now in this market is extremely important. And here's something else that I, oops, that I want you to think about. I always had this theory when we were going through this and I still think it's really relevant right now is you never wanna be more than one price reduction away from a sale. Back to this correcting market. If you price it just a little bit too high, if you price it just a little bit too high, you can't catch up. That one price reduction wasn't enough. So now you need to be really dialed in when choosing your list price and the strategy that you're going to apply to getting this home sold. You need to price that baby right on Point. Now I'm going to share something else with you. This is another tool that I used back in 2007, 2008, 2009 when we were going through this. And it's a very simple theory. It's a target and we all know that the bullseye is the middle and, and in this case it represents being sold. And these outer rings represent you're overpriced and just how much you're overpriced. So if you're getting absolutely no showings and I, I mean, listen, we're hearing this right now. People are calling us. My home's been on the market three months. I think I need to switch realtors. Uh, I'm getting no showings at all. Well, I remember hearing that in 2008. What that really means is you're overpriced, right? Yes, we can apply some great marketing and other things to help, but overpriced is overpriced. So this is like, take a screenshot of this and keep this. No matter who you're listed with, it doesn't matter. Use this tool. If you're getting very limited or no showings at all, you're at least 10% overpriced. 
Now this tool is important because you can bring it right back to this graph and on your next price reduction, figure out where you need to be so that you're only one price reduction, that price reduction away from selling. But let's go back here. Very limited or no showings, you're at least 10% overpriced, right? So we'll do simple math, $400,000 house, and you're getting no showings at all, you're overpriced $40,000. Now, what typically would happen without this knowledge and without somebody educating you on this, you're at 400,000, okay? We went from 400 down to 385 instead of 360. And now again, as the market continues to decline, you make your next price reduction to 360, but now it's too late. You need to go to 349.9. So use this tool. Hey, my home's on the market and I'm getting some showings, but not a lot and certainly no offers yet. You're probably 5 to 10% overpriced. I'm going to get rid of this just so that we're focused here. You're probably still 5 to 10% overpriced. And then we get into this zone, which is you're getting showings, but you're not getting any offers. And this is a scary place to be sometimes because you can trick yourself into thinking everything is fine. But you really need to be paying attention. Like if you're getting four or five, six showings in a week and you're still not getting offers, well, then you've got to be able to address that price sooner than later. Use this as well as thinking about this tool to say, okay, I'm here. I spent time on the market and now I need, I need to drop. How far do I need to drop? And you move right back to your graph and you say, oh, well, I've had very limited showings. I know I'm at least 5 to 10% off. And then you take your number of whatever you're at. Let's say you're at 400. And you decide, you know what, I'm, uh, I'm probably 10% off. And you drop what feels like a, a little bit larger drop right away, but you're only doing it once. And then you're procuring a sale. Here's another little trick that I always like my sellers to use, right? Inside of our organization, we have great systems and plans and processes um, thoughtful so that we're making good choices. Don't lower your price on a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday, right? The same way we bring all of our new listings to the market on Friday, you should be going into that next price. Like I could have a conversation with the seller on Monday. Hey, we went through the weekend. No one came to the open house. We need to think about adjusting our price. I can have that conversation, but I'm not going to drop it on Monday. I'm going to wait until we head into the weekend make the price reduction on Thursday afternoon, plan for another open house so that I can capture all of that activity in that, in that small window, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and procure a sale. And even in those moments, sometimes you've spent time on the market with very limited showings, but a price correction along with going into the weekend in an open house, often we'll get multiple offers on those. And sometimes they get bid back up closer to your original price. I think with all this being said, it's just important to understand that the market is changing, right? Uh, it, it's a correction. We're, we're not going to see what we saw uh, in 2008 because there was so much of that that occurred from bad loans. We're not going to see that. But we still, if you're going to make a move, you've got to have a strategy, and this is a great strategy to use. If you use this, you'll be outsmarting the agent that you hire. Unless, of course, we have an opportunity to serve you. <laughs> but anyway, I hope that helps and makes some sense and maybe takes a little bit of fear out of what's going on because uh, there's nothing worse than sitting on the market and not getting showings or getting very limited showings, especially after we came off of this. So hopefully this makes a lot of sense for you. And listen, if maybe you need to have a conversation and, and really about your specific pricing, reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to help you. Of course, no obligation. We just want to serve.